Do you want to become a social media manager or marketer? Or do you just want to learn about social media marketing? Stick around. You'll love this video. So if you want to learn about social media, trends, tips, hacks, process, or systems, this is the place to go. So this episode will be a part of a learning series that I would be uploading here on YouTube. Alright, so let's actually start. So our topic for today, for the first episode, we'll be discussing social media marketing. And in this episode, I've actually prepared a lot of topics for you. You're in for a treat. So I prepared several topics here that would be relevant for you to understand the basics and how to begin as a social media marketer. Or even if you're a business, you would find lots of valuable stuff here. You'd, you'd understand the basics of social media marketing and kung ano yung mga dapat iwasan, mga dapat gawin, and why it's actually important. In this video, we'll discuss what is digital marketing, social media marketing, and content marketing, two types of post, the art of storytelling, brand identity, competitor analysis, content category, engagement, jab, 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 right hook, ads manager versus boost post, goals in ad campaign, and the last one is quality or quantity. So before we actually proceed with this one, I'd like to formally introduce myself because of course some most of you who's visiting this channel might be seeing me for the very first time. Some of you know me from TikTok, some of you know me from Facebook or Instagram. But let me just give a uh, short introduction of who I am and how I started in this industry. So my name is Axel Xavier Adamos. I am the founder and managing director of Usad Creative Marketing. It's a social media marketing agency based here in the Philippines. I studied multimedia arts. So as of the moment, I do blogs, I do vlogs, I do infographics, not just for my personal brands, but also for other brands and other businesses. And oh, uh, I've been in the digital marketing industry for almost six years now. Uh, right now, I'm 24 years old. I started in the industry when I was 18, I think. So just um, a bit of a background or story. Um, I started in the social media marketing space because I had a business before. That business was a burger joint in Marikina City. So when I started with that business, I didn't have that much capital. And imagine that was six years ago, so I was still 18 years old. On our first days, we weren't actually getting results. We weren't getting the customers that we wanted for the business. And the reason for that is the business was actually located inside um, a subdivision in Marikina City. So hindi siya sa my main road, hindi siya sa highway. So mahirap talaga siyang makita. Second, we didn't have much budget when we started the business. As I've mentioned, it's just a startup. So it was really hard getting people to visit the restaurant. So, as an 18-year-old, what I thought was, why not promote it in social media? And to be honest, back then, social media was just used for personal, for personal use. So there weren't any business pages, wala pa yung mga Facebook ads, wala pang sponsored ads. So dati yung ginawa ko lang was I created a personal account and I named it after the business. And my strategy back then was I added a lot of people in, in the location and then I posted like twice or thrice a day. And after a week of doing that, we actually gained results. Nakuha kami ng mga customers for the business and the customers that we were actually getting were from different places. So that's when I actually saw the power of social media. And the rest is history. Nakikita nyo na ako ngayon dito sa YouTube channel na to. So besides being um, a founder and managing director, uh, I'm also hired as a social media manager by personal brands locally and internationally as well. So I work with a lot of clients already as of the moment. And last two is I'm a digital content creator and also a social media coach or consultant. So that's just me. Let's actually start with our topic. So the question is, what is digital marketing? So digital marketing is a component of marketing that utilizes internet and online-based digital technologies such as desktop, computers, mobile phones, and other digital media and platforms to promote products and services. So basically, digital marketing is anything that involves any digital device to create marketing materials or advertisements or content. And you don't actually need to learn all of this because these are different types of digital marketing, but we'll be focusing more on two types of digital marketing, which is content marketing and social media marketing. But yeah, we have email marketing, influencer marketing, 
viral marketing, mobile marketing, radio and TV ads, electronic billboards, and the other the other types of marketing. So, um, I think what's relevant to our topic as of the moment is just social media marketing and content marketing. So let's get into that. All right. So let's get into the topic. Content marketing and social media marketing. So first, we need to ask the question, why is social media marketing important? So um, I've prepared here two illustrations. The one on the left is a picture uh, with a lot of billboards, probably, sa edsa to. The second one is a woman holding her phone habang may TV sa background, probably. Let's just say na commercial to. Diba? May commercial sa background. Maraming reasons kung bakit important yung social media, pero i-highlight natin tatlo. Alright? So the first one would be attention. So First of all, social media, as of the moment, has the attention. So compared to these two pictures or illustrations that I'm showing right now on my screen, so compared to billboards, yeah, let's talk about billboards. Usually, nag work on billboard ads pag traffic, di ba? Pag sa EDSA, alam naman natin, sobrang traffic lagi sa EDSA. Or kunyari, for example, like the drive tayo, di ba? Or kung kunyari, nasa, nakasakay tayo, nagko-commute, nasa bus. So attention, why attention? So may kita natin, unang-una, ang dami na agad billboards, di ba? It's hard to get the attention kung maraming katawing billboards. So that's one. And second, ito, let's Let's be honest, let's be real. Ngayon, sa panahon natin, pag nagko-commute tayo, or for example, nagda-drive tayo, do we still even look at billboards? Kasi usually, pag nagda-drive tayo, pag traffic, or kanyari, nagko-commute tayo in traffic, what we do? And kahit i-check nyo to, kahit saan, kahit sa LRTs, may kita mo lahat ng tao nasa phone, di ba? Either they're checking messages, emails, or social media. Lahat naka-phone. Kung hindi tulog, naka-phone, di ba? And even for commercials, it's the same thing. Usually, in commercial, di ba, nangyayari siya like after one show, di ba? Or kunyari, break time sa isang teleserye, series, or kunyari, let's say, finals, di ba? NBA game, game 7, di ba? Nag-commercial. What would we do? Normally, our initial reaction is you would grab our phones and then we would check social media. Titignan natin kung ano yung trending ngayon. Grabe si Lebron, ang dami niyang nagawa. Diba? Mag-tweet tayo, magsa-status tayo sa Facebook. So that's how it usually works, lalo na ngayon. So that's one, the attention. Second one is it's affordable. Comparing it to billboard ads or commercial TV ads, na usually it ranges up to 50,000 to 100,000 depende sa production and also depende sa kung gaano kalaki and kung saan nakapuesto ang location ng billboards or ng commercials. Pero for commercials like 15 to 30 seconds screen time, diba? It would cost that much. Unlike sa social media. First of all, social media is free. You don't even need to subscribe to have an account. And second, is posting is free, diba? Now, if you want to do paid ads, if we want to do sponsored ads, which we'll be discussing later, did you know that if you create an ad, you can spend 100 pesos, just 100 pesos, and get good results already? So that's the comparison. 100 pesos to 50 to 100,000 pesos. And nandito pa yung attention ngayon sa social media. So that's the second. The third one is targeting. Now, why is targeting important? Like for example, dito sa billboard ad na to, or kunyari sa commercial, kapag kunyari pinakita nila yun sa mga tao, gawin natin example tong isang billboard dito. It is a billboard by Sun, um, a carrier here in the Philippines. Now for example, ako, um, nakasakay ako dito sa bus na to. Now, pag nakita ko tong billboard na to, possibly, hindi ako interesado. Why? Kasi syempre, globe user ako. ba? Bakit relevant sa akin tong ad sa sun? Walang kasiguraduhan when it comes to targeting ang mga yung traditional way of marketing. Unlike sa social media, you can actually target people through their age, through their gender, location, hobbies, interests, their demographics. The sky is the limit. You can even target kung ano man yung mga pinafollow nilang pages, kung ano yung mga recently binilhan na nila ng mga businesses. You can do that with social media marketing. So those are the three benefits or perks of doing social media marketing. That's why social media marketing is important. And why did I discuss this? I discussed this because, of course, if you're a social media marketer or if you're planning to be a social media manager in the future, you would need to explain this to your clients, diba? To, to get their business, to partner up with them. You need to explain to them why it's important and why you need it for your brand. And it's also good to know if you're wanting to start a business kasi at least alam mo. Now with social media, you can create ads that are affordable, the attention is there, and you can target your target market. Again, social media marketing is free all right now let's get on to the second topic which is the two types of posts now i won't be detailed masyado dito sa topic na to kasi i know na medyo basic talaga to pero just for everyone sa mga nanonood na hindi talaga nakakaalam so discuss ko na lang din so two types of posts are organic posts and the paid posts now the organic post here's the paid post 
So organic posts, let's discuss that for a second. So organic posts, ito yung mga posts na free. Anything na pinost mo ng free, that's called an organic post already. I believe everyone here, almost everyone here, lalo na if you're watching this video and if you're trying to learn about social media marketing, I know that you've already done an organic post once, twice, or thrice in your life. If you have a Facebook, lahat ng my days mo, lahat ng posts mo, lahat ng status mo, that's already called an organic post. And same with the, the business pages. Anything that's for free na you post, any content that you post, that's already an organic post. Now, paid post, ito naman yung mga paid, of course, from the word itself, paid post. Now, paid post, ito yung mga sponsored ads na nakikita natin sa feeds natin. So, ito yung pag nagsascroll tayo, nakikita nakasulat sponsored ad. So, yun ang mga paid post. Um, even on YouTube, dito, sa platform na to, if you would be watching this video, probably, there might be a sponsored ad na ma-encounter mo. So, ito usually yung skip natin. So, that's a paid post. Now, the question is, how to post? So, this is not literally the question na, paano ba mag-post? I'm sure lahat tayo marunong dito mag-post, diba? You just simply upload a picture or you just type in anything that you want and then hit publish or post or share now, diba? But my question here is how to post? Like, ano bang ipopost natin, diba? Kung hindi natin alam. So, dito papasok yung the art of storytelling. So, with storytelling, you tell your audience what your brand is all about. Storytelling in the social media marketing sense means that you use social media to tell your brand's story, to convey its voice. Take note that social media is not just a tactic to sell your products or your services. Nakared siya for a reason, itong nandito sa screen natin. Social media is not just a tactic to sell your products or your services. Now, what am I talking about? I'm sure hindi lang ako dito, yung nag facebook and probably nakakita ng ibang businesses or probably friends natin nang pinapost lang puro product services niya. And that's okay, pero kung puro pa ulit-ulit na lang, sell, 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 promote, 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 di ba? Hindi na masyadong entertaining sa atin, alam naman natin araw-araw kung anong binibenta niya. Wala tayong makuhang value, di ba? And minsan, hindi na lang din entertaining tignan sa social media. And there's a saying that people like to buy stuff, but they don't want to be sold to. And a classic example of that is, kunyari nasa department store tayo. And minsan may mga may kita tayong damit or kung anumang bagay na gusto natin. And interested tayo. Pero once a sales lady comes in, and then magtatanong, Sir, ano pong size? Gusto niyo po to, sir? Ganyan. Magsasuggest siya ng kung ano-ano. Then, di ba, suddenly, we, we lose a bit of interest dun sa product na yun, di ba? Tapos alis na lang tayo, huwag na po, di ba? It's the same with social media. Ayaw ng mga tao na makulit sa social media. Pag post, post, post ka palagi ng products mo, advertise, 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 tapos you're not giving people value in return, then magsasawa yung mga tao, tangkilikin or tignan yung mga posts na ginagawa mo. Dito papasok yung storytelling. Now, I have here an example. This is is an award-winning ad by Burger King. Diba? Alam naman, lahat naman ata tayo dito, alam yung Burger King. So, Burger King sells burgers. So, why is this an award-winning ad? So, this is a classic example of how we utilize storytelling sa brand or sa business natin. So, if you can see on this picture, on the left side, makakita tayo ng burger na parang perfect. Ito yung pang-commercial talaga na burger. Diba? Commercial-looking burger, maganda. And sa kanan naman, nandito naman, yung moldy burger nga na tinatawag. Moldy, um... Tagalog niya, ano, uh, basta yung Tagalog niya, I'll search it up, pero if you know the answer, comment. <laughs> basta, so it's a moldy burger. Bakit pinakita to ni Burger King sa atin? Pinakita to ni Burger King sa atin kasi Burger King wants to tell a story. Anong gustong sabihin ni Burger King? So una pa lang, di ba? Pag pinost to ni Burger King, yung moldy burgers, it would grab our attention, di ba? Yuck, kadiri, that's our initial reaction. So it got our attention already, di ba? I grabber. Now, the art of storytelling in this ad comes dun sa background niya, how this burger was made. So, what Burger King is telling us is that pag ang burger kasi, ginagamitan mo ng preservatives, it won't look like this. Hindi siya magmo-mold in a span of like 34 days. So, parang sinasabi ni Burger King na all natural ingredients ang ginagamit niya. Hindi siya gumagamit ng preservatives. And natural lang talaga na magiging gantong itsura kapag all natural ingredients, diba? Which means, mas healthy yung burgers nila compared sa competitors nila. So, it's an award-winning ad kasi nagamit talaga yung storytelling and nag-trend siya. You guys can look it up if you want. Alright, so that's the art of storytelling. Now, we already know what to post, diba? And how to post. 
Now, let's discuss about brand identity. So, the question is, what is brand identity? So, brand identity is how we present ourselves in social media. Ito yung visual presentation, values and beliefs, mission and vision, personality, and tone of voice. Visual presentation, ito yung logos, yung cover photo, yung pinaka-look talaga ng branding natin, di ba? Yung colors na ginagamit natin. So, that's a visual presentation. We also have values and beliefs, mission and vision. Ito yung mga paniniwalaan ng brands natin. Ito yung paniniwalaan ng business natin. Of course, hindi tayo magtatayo ng business kung walang purpose, di ba? So, we need to figure that out in order for us to market our products or our services effectively in social media. We also have to find a personality for our brand. Now, what are different types of personalities ng brands? So, for example, merong mga businesses or brands na funny ang approach nila sa social media. Let's say, Angkas. Angkas is very smart in marketing kasi they're personalized tas nakakatawa sila. They are always in the trends. They always share memes that interacts and engages with people. So, that's one personality. Meron namang mga businesses. Yung mga businesses is very formal, di ba? Very professional look looking talaga. So, those are types of personalities. And meron din namang mga businesses na educators. Like what I'm doing right now, I'm sharing, I'm teaching you how to do social media marketing. So, this is my branding. This is my personality. I'm an educator in social media. And last is our tone of voice. How do we speak? Like, for example, nga kanina, another brand. Let's use Kong TV as an example. So, si Kong TV Party party tol! So, si Kong TV, their tone of voice is they're very funny. Yung parang humor nila is parang meme type humor, di ba? So, that's their tone of voice. That's how they speak to their customers or their audience in social media. Now, when determining your branding identity, you need to ask yourself these questions. Who are we as a brand? Who are our audience? We need to ask who are we as a brand para at least kilala natin yung sarili natin, di ba? Paano natin ipapakilala yung sarili natin sa ibang tao? Who are our audience? Sino yung target market natin? Sino yung mga gusto nating makita ng channel, ng brand, or ng business natin sa social media? Like for example ako, this channel was actually made for social media marketers or business owners, startups, or people who wants to be a social media manager. So, yun yung audience ko. Kayo yung audience ko. Anyone who wants to learn about the digital world, kayo yung audience ko. Now, how do you want to talk to them? Meron mga iba't ibang ways to talk to your customers or your audience in social media. That's through blogs, vlogs, infographics, and marami pang iba. Now, for example, sige, gamitin natin si Kong TV. Kong TV is known for creating videos, di ba? Funny videos. So, vlogs sa YouTube channel nila and also sa Facebook nila. To si Kong, hindi naman siya nagsusulat. They don't write blogs, di ba? Para sumikat pa sila lalo. They just stick to one way of communicating to people and that's through vlogs. You need to figure that out. Hindi mo naman kailangan maging master yung pagbablog, vlog, infographics, or kung ano man yan, di ba? You need to master one thing. And my advice is to always go hard on the things that you are good at and the things that you are interested. Now, lastly, we need to figure out what is our message to them. What is our message to our audience? So, I have this good quote as figure out what you want to say and say it in a million ways. Now, ako, Sige, let's use my channel as an example. What I want to say is I want to help startups and business owners. I want to teach social media marketing. Yun ang gusto kong sabihin sa maraming tao, di ba? Pero yun lang ba ang gagawin kong content? Harap ba ako sa inyo ngayon? Sasabihin ko lang ba sa inyo na gusto ko kayong turuan? Yun na lang ba yun? No. As much as possible, I try to create different content so that I can say my message in a million ways. Iba't ibang ways ko siya sasabihin. So that's how we establish our branding identity. Now, after establishing our branding identity, next thing we need to do, kasi syempre kilala na natin yung sarili natin, di ba? Kilala na natin kung anong klaseng brand tayo. Next thing we want to do is do our competitor analysis. Now, this is actually very important. So, four steps to creating a competitive marketing analysis is to first identify the competitors. So, unang-una, kailangan natin alamin kung sino yung mga katulad natin, di ba? Sino yung competitors natin? Like, for example, if ikaw si Burger King, sino ba mga competitors mo? Si McDo, di ba? Si Jollibee, and yung mga fast food chains pa na iba dyan. Sila yung mga competitors mo. Bakit natin kailangan malaman kung sino yung mga competitors? Kailangan natin malaman kasi we need to compare yung competitive factors nating dalawa. Kung ano yung ginagawa nila sa ginagawa natin. Kung ano yung kaya nilang gawin and kung ano yung kailangan natin gawin. Now, next step is to determine strengths and weakness. Kailangan natin alamin kung ano yung strengths nila para at least pwede natin pagkuhanan ng inspiration. Hindi naman sa gagayahin natin sila pero para at least alam lang natin where to start, di ba? Kasi ang maganda is success leaves footprints. So, we need to follow those footprints na nagagawa ng mga successful brands or businesses din. So, determine their strengths and also yung weaknesses nila. Now, bakit weaknesses? Kasi when you determine their weaknesses, it's actually an advantage for you as a business owner or as a marketer. Kasi kung anong weaknesses ng ibang competitors, kayang-kaya mong galingan dun sa certain area na yon. Which means, lamang ka na sa competitor mo. 
in some sort of way. And then lastly, we need to write a competitive analysis. And for me, I think the best competitive marketing analysis is when we write it down. Para at least pwede natin siyang balik-balikan from time to time and para, di ba, organize tayo and parang may study tayo na ginagawa for our business or our brands. So once we determine kung ano nang mga ginagawa ng competitors natin, next is content creation. So before we actually get into the content creation part, so let's discuss content creation. So most of the time, content creators, nahihirapan tayo, di ba? And kahit ako, di lang din naman kayo, nahihirapan tayo. I don't know. I don't know what to post, and I don't know how to post. Alright? So, the answer to that is, categorize your content. Now, what do I mean by categorize your content? Kasi ang mga contents, naniniwala ko, na maraming maraming categories yan. Pero I have these four categories na pwede mong pagbasehan sa marketing strategy mo or sa business mo. Hindi ka na mahihirapan mag-create ng content kapag sundin mo lang to. Alright, so these are the four categories, content categories. So, first is the product. Second is personal branding. Three is informative. Fourth is engagement. Now, product. Let's talk about product. So, kung may business ka, or if you're promoting your personal brand, just like me, what I'm doing right now, ano yung product, di ba? product is ito yung mga, kunyari, meron kang produkto sa business mo, may binibenta ka, let's say, baked cookies man yan, kung ano man yung binibenta mo, that's a product. And ako naman, sa end ko, I'm trying to sell knowledge sa ibang tao, di ba? So I can also get clients as a consultant, a coach, or as a social media marketing agency, di ba? So those are my products. Yun yung binibenta ko. So any content related to selling, that's a product content. That's one way to categorize it. Now second is the personal branding. Now personal branding, ito yung pag pinapersonalize na natin yung mga content na ginagawa natin. Like for example, ako hindi naman ako nagpo-post lagi ng sell, sell, sell. Diba? Hindi ko laging binibenta kung ano man. Hindi ako nagbibenta ng mga course. Or hindi ko binibenta, hindi ko laging pinopost na parang book now or schedule now to set an appointment. What I do is I personalize my content. I share every day kung anong mga natututunan ko para at least matutunan nyo din. So that's me personalizing my content. Diba? I share stories to my clients. I share stories to my friends on Facebook, Instagram, sometimes on TikTok. Now third, is what I call an informative content or slash educational content. Now, ito yung pag nagtuturo tayo sa audience natin. Like what I'm doing right now, this is an informative content. Now, the fourth one is the engagement content. Now, for engagement content, ito yung nakikipag-usap tayo sa audience natin. Ito yung pag nagtatanong tayo ng mga questions sa kanila, kaya uso sa Instagram stories yung mga polls, di ba? Mga surveys. We need to engage with people. Or for example, another type of engagement content is pag kunyari, magpo-post tayo ng something relatable to our audience, di ba? And we want to engage with them. Um, I can actually consider memes as engagement posts or engagement content kasi somehow nagre-react yung mga tao, di ba? Nagko-comment sila, they tag their friends. So that's an engagement content. So again, product, personal branding, informative, and engagement. Now, I'll discuss kung paano natin may utilize yung categorizing your content. Okay? Dito ko i-introduce yung content calendar. So, kanina, uh, what I mentioned was to categorize your content into four. Now, pag gagawa tayo ng content calendar, at least na-organize natin yung mga posts natin. At hindi na rin tayo may hirapan mag-post like, from Mondays to Saturdays. Hindi tayo magka-cram, hindi tayo magpa-procrastinate, di ba? At least ready na lahat ng content natin. Hindi na tayo may hirapan lagi mag-brainstorm or gumawa ng content. Here is my advice to content creators out there on how to categorize your content. So, let's say, for example, I want to post six times per week, di ba? Let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday. Mondays to Saturdays, gusto kong mag-post ng content. Araw-araw. ba? Diba? Sunday, pahinga na natin, for example. So, that's 24 posts per month. And ang maganda kanina, nakategorize na natin yung content natin. So, first category is product content. So, gawa tayo ng anim na product content. Now, next content would be personal branding content. Gawa tayo ng anim na personal branding content. Next one would be informative content. Gawa tayo ng anim ulit. And then, last one would be engagement content. Gawa tayo ng anim ulit. So, all in all, di ba, gagawa tayo ng 24 posts. Ang maganda dito, tig si 6 sila. So, anim na product content, 6 personal branding, 6 informative, and 6 engagement content. So, in this way, at least, parang may, may flow or may pattern yung paggawa natin ng content. Di ba? May kita natin na yung pinopost natin, hindi laging puro product content, hindi puro bra personal branding, hindi puro informative, hindi puro engagement. Mix siya. And what I recommend is i-mix mo din siya, like um, alternate sana siya. Like for example, Monday would be a product content, Tuesday would be a personal branding content, Wednesday is an informative content, and then Thursday is an engagement content. Salit-salit lang sila. That's how we can effectively 
do or categorize our content. ba diba? Mas napadali yung content creation process natin. We don't need to think of a content every day. Let's plan it out using a content calendar. Alright, so that's how to easily categorize your content. Diba? Mas napadali. One technique that I use that's effective that I learned from one of the best digital marketers of our generation, Gary Vaynerchuk. So Gary Vaynerchuk, kung di nyo kilala, he's a best-selling author sa New York Times and he's also a motivational or public speaker. He's also an owner of a media company and he's also an investor. He's a lot of stuff. I recommend you check him out. So Gary Vaynerchuk's tip on creating content kasi ang dami yung tatanong sa kanya. How do we create content, diba? How do we produce two to three posts or content per day? Diba? Kasi yun yung recommended eh, to post two to three times per day. So ang hirap nun, dapat araw-araw marami tayong content. His advice is don't create document it. What does he mean by that? So, when we're creating content, sobrang hirap mag-brainstorm ng mga bagong ideas, di ba? Um, ako, kahit ako, marami akong content na pinapost. Every day, nagpo-post ako ng maraming content as much as possible kung hanggang ilan yung kaya ko. Kahit ako, hanggang ngayon, nahihirapan pa rin ako. I still struggle. Um, just like anyone. And I know that you would. I-expect mo na. Pero I know that with the tips or mga dinidiscuss ko ngayon, makakatulong to. Pero, just like what he said, don't create document. Kasi si Gary Vaynerchuk, ang ginawa niya is like for 18 to 20 hours, laging may sumusunod sa kanyang cameraman. Laging may nagdo-document sa kanya, may nag-film kung anong ginagawa niya. So, that's what he's been doing. Kaya ang dami laging posts sa Instagram, sa Facebook niya, sa lahat ng platforms niya. Magugulat ka, meron siya laging like 5 to 8 contents na pinapost sa mga pages niya. Anything that he does, he documents it. For example, he's a public speaker, di ba? That's his job. So kapag nagsasalita siya sa mga tao, instead na nagsasalita lang siya dyan, he hires people para videohan siya. And after siyang videohan nun, yung syempre yung mga words of wisdom na sinasabi niya, yung mga tips and advices na sinasabi niya, nakukuha yun sa camera, and yun ang mga ginagawa niyang content. It's easier that way. And kung hindi naman tayo si Gary Vaynerchuk, and wala tayong videographers na sumusunod sa atin 24 hours, pwede natin siyang gawin through our phones. And how do we do that? Alright. So here's how we document our daily routine or how we can produce content ng maraming beses. So for example, ako kunyari, I am a financial advisor, let's say. So let's think of what a financial advisor does. Kunyari, filling up an application form. So instead na fill up ko lang siya, magsusulat lang ako, ang gagawin ko, I would get my phone, I would hit record, and then I would either do a video or for example, time lapse of what I am doing. And Siyempre, ang tanong natin, paano yung naging content, di ba? What I would do is I would upload it, for example, sa my day, Instagram story, or kunyari sa Facebook, or kung saan man sa TikTok, and then maglalagay ako ng caption. Ang ika-caption ko, as of the moment, I'm already filling up the application forms of my valued clients. And I'm very, very proud to say that I've saved another life. Hashtag financial advisor. And then, just hit publish or share the post. So that's already one piece of content. And the more that we practice documenting what we're doing, the more na mas dadali and mas gagaling tayo sa pagdo-document. And mas marami tayong content na mapaproduce every day. So I want to do a live demo right now of how this works. So what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my phone and I would document for a content. Alright, here's what I would be doing. Just to show you how easy we can actually do this, di ba? So, I am now going to press record. Hi guys, this is Axel, and I'm currently doing a YouTube video. I am shooting a YouTube video for people who are requesting to have or to learn about social media marketing. So, if you want to learn, go ahead and check this out. Stay tuned, I'll be uploading this within this week. I hope everyone has a good day. Alright, so that's already one piece of content. And toto, I'll be posting that in my pages. So I can just um, demonstrate it to you how easy you can actually do it. Maglalagay siguro ako ng caption, siguro I'll add up a background music, but that's how easy it is. Diba? That's already one piece of content. Document instead of creating. Now, once uh, we already have our content, next thing that we want to establish is the engagement with our followers or our audience. Now, why is engagement important in social media? Let me share an example. This is what I'd like to call egg-gagement. So, some of you might know uh, what happened here, pero this is a picture of an egg that was posted to an account called world underscore record underscore egg on the 4th of January. The caption under the picture says, let's set a world record together and get the most liked post on Instagram. Beating the current world record held by Kylie Jenner, which is 18 million. So, itong picture of an egg, imagine, wala siyang relevance, nonsense talaga siya. Diba? Hindi siya relevant sa akin. Pero ako, when I saw this one, I actually liked the photo. So, I'm a part of that 18 million likes na ginawa dito sa 
engagement content na to. And why am I um, showing this as an example? I'm showing this as an example because this is one way of engaging with people. Because as I mentioned a while ago, people go to social media because they, they want to feel connected and they want to be updated. They want to follow the trends. And as of the moment, and on time na to, that was a trend. So, ako, wala naman siyang relevant sa akin. Pero, since ang daming taong nag engage and I also want to engage, I want to be a part of it, that's why I would like the picture. And that's a good engagement post or engagement content, di ba? People go to social media because it's a personal thing for them. People go to social media kasi they would see their family and friends, they would see the, the pages that they like. So, engagement is important in social media. Types of engagements are polls, surveys, asking a question, joining or creating groups, commenting on other people's posts. So these are the types of engagements. If we do posts, meron mga magbo-vote. So ito, ang tinatawag ko dito is engagement pyramid. Okay? So inimbento ko lang ngayon. Wala talagang engagement pyramid. Ang ganda lang talaga ng slide na to. Mukha siyang pyramid. So tawagin na natin siyang engagement pyramid. Pwede nyo itong screenshot, guys. <laughs> now let me share to you this book written by Gary Vaynerchuk. Siya yung example natin kanina. This book is titled Jab, 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 Right hook. So, the technique on social media is as much as possible try to tell a story, di ba? And provide value instead of selling, selling, selling. And bakit ito yung title ng book ni Gary Vaynerchuk? So, explain ko lang bakit jab, 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 right hook. Alright, so jab. Jab yung nakikita nating illustration dito sa left. Ito yung parang inabot mo lang or minsan tatama lang siya actually sa kalaban mo. And the purpose of a jab is to either score and also, ito kasi yung parang sumusuntok ka lang ng, minsan sakto lang, hindi naman siya yung full strength mo, di ba? Sumusuntok ka lang to get points or para mas maging technical. Maraming jabs, mas okay. As much as possible, invest in jabs. Katulad dito sa example, parang minsan ginagamit din ng jabs para sukatin yung kalaban, yung measurement. Para makita mo yung distance kung malapit na ba siya. And what is a right hook? A right hook, for example, ito yung ginawa ni Manny Pacquiao dito sa right image. So, a right hook, ito yung parang pinaka-solid punch talaga natin. So, if for example ako, I'm right-handed, so ang power punch ko is nasa right. So, yung, yung left hand ko, ito yung gagamitin ko lang to use the jabs, and then from time to time, magra-right hook ako. Now, the point of a right hook, or the use of a right hook, is para pakawalan mo yung malakas mong suntok kapag tama na yung timing. So, you don't usually use the right hook. From time to time mo lang siya gagamitin. Hindi pa lagi. Hanapin mo yung maganda or yung perfect na timing and then saka mo lang papakawalan yung right hook mo. Kasi di ba kung lagi natin gagamitin yung right hook natin, sayang, di ba? So, jab, 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 right hook. And bakit ito yung ginamit ni Gary Vaynerchuk na example sa book niya? Or bakit ito yung pangalan ng book niya? So, let's connect it to marketing. So, jab, jab is equals to value and then right hook is equals to selling. So, parang value, value, value and then sell. Ang sinasabi ni Gary Vaynerchuk, simple lang, is kapag nagpo-post tayo ng content, pag naglalabas tayo ng content sa social media marketing natin, ang strategy dapat natin is provide value, provide value, provide value and then once we've provided the value na gusto ng audience natin, that's the time that we would sell. That's the, the time that we would use our right hook. Sabi ko nga kanina, hindi tayo dapat lang selling, selling, selling. Ayaw natin binibentahan tayo ng puro benta, benta, benta. Kasi nakakawalan ng interest kapag tayo yung audience. Pag nakikita natin puro benta, benta yung ibang tao, nakawalan tayo talaga ng interest doon. And for some reason, ako, I find it, honestly, it, I, I find it in genuine or hindi parang hindi authentic yung brand kapag puro promote, promote, promote lang. The value that I find with other brands is siguro yung entertainment factor, yung na-entertain ako sa mga contents, whether nakakatawan man, kung mga memes man yan, like parang yung ginagawa niya ang cast, diba? Or going into trends, they're providing value to me. Kasi they entertain my day and I get to be updated sa trends. Or for example, yung mga contents na ganito, I hope you find value sa mga educational or informative contents ko. The reason my TikTok blew up just recently is because as much as possible, yung mga secrets ko sa pagmamarket, hindi ko sinolo. Ang ginawa ko, I taught people and I shared them with people. I provided people yung secrets and yung mga nalalaman ko when it comes to social media marketing. That's why they found the videos helpful. Kaya I got a lot of good feedbacks and a lot of good comments na I never knew this type of hack or tip. So I provided value. I got lots of followers or several followers on TikTok and even on my Instagram and Facebook page. That's why some people recognize me as a social media guy. Kasi as much as possible, I provide tips and hacks. Well, value muna. And then when the right timing comes, that's when you sell. That's when you use your right hook. So now that we know how to create a content, kaya na natin gumawa ng mga organic posts. 
Now, let's head on to this topic. The next topic would be more about paid posts. When we create a paid post or a sponsored ads, there's actually two ways to do it. First one is the ads manager, and then the other one is the boost post. Now, ads manager versus boost post. May mga nagtatanong, meron din mga nakakaalam. Actually, sa TikTok page ko, I shared why the other is more important and what to do and what to avoid dito sa dalawang to. If you find this video helpful, please go ahead and follow me on my TikTok as well. You would find their value tips and hacks. Actually, sa, sa YouTube video ko, it's more educational and informative, like parang yung ginagawa natin ngayon. More on discussion mode, pero sa TikTok ko, nandun yung mga mabibilis na tips. So, if you want to learn very quick, go ahead and follow me on my TikTok. The link's below. It's at Creative with Axel. So, let's get back to the topic. Ads manager versus boost post. Ano nga ba sa dalawa? So, boost post, alam ko nakita kayo na to. If you're familiar with business pages or if you've handled business pages, nakita kayo ng boost post. And this is actually one common mistake that business owners or marketers, new marketers commit is they boost post. I'll tell you why I don't recommend boost post and why instead ads manager is the tool to use or the process to do. So, why ads manager instead of boost post? Alright, so Ads Manager because it's more goal-oriented. I'll show an illustration later of what I'm talking about. Ads Manager as well because targeting is more accurate. And lastly, your ads have more placements. Actually, marami pang benefits kung bakit, or marami pang perks kung bakit Ads Manager kesa sa Boost Post. Pero um, let's talk about these three kasi ito yung importante. Alright, let me actually go into another tab, like demo tayo. So, Ads Manager... First of all, Ads Manager is more goal-oriented. And here's what I'm talking about. So, we're right now at um, Ads Manager. And you can just type facebook.com slash Ads Manager to manage the campaigns. So, right now, let's try to compare. On this tab, I have the Ads Manager. Here's the Boost Post. So, I'm using my page as the example. So, try natin Boost Post. Dito naman, let's create a campaign. Now, on uh, this slide, we would see here first, Ads Manager is more goal-oriented. Now, here's what I actually mean. So, when you actually boost a post, ito yung may kita mo, and wala masyadong objectives. Unlike, pag dito, Ads Manager gumawa, you would see here lots of campaign objectives. So, dito parang sobrang standard, sobrang basic lang niya. Sa Ads Manager naman, may kita mo kung gusto ba natin ng brand awareness, gusto natin ng reach. Gusto natin magkaroon ng messages, mga leads, video views, kung videos man, yung ibuboost natin or yung gagawa natin ng sponsored ad. Dito naman, conversion, catalog, sales, or trap. Most of the time, uh, what I recommend is I either getting messages or dito sa conversions. Depende pa rin talaga sa campaign objective mo. Pero if you want to speak more with your customers before them availing your services or your products, what I would suggest or recommend is dito tayo sa consideration. We should target them so they would message us, di ba? To get leads. And if meron naman tayong products or meron tayong website, meron tayong stores, physical stores, what I would suggest is dito tayo sa conversions. Nandito, store traffic, catalog sales, conversion. I think I would be talking about the details or the, the specifics or the in-depth of Ads Manager probably in the next video para hindi naman masyadong info overload for us. Ito lang, ipopoint out ko lang kung bakit mas maganda ang Ads Manager kesa sa Boost Post. So, una yung objective, dito walang objective. Para ka lang basta nag-promote ng kahit anong ad mo or kahit anong post mo. Ganun siya. At least dito, mas specific yung gusto natin gawin. Meron tayong goals. Now, next dito sa list natin is targeting is more accurate. Now, here's what I mean. Alright, so for example, sige, dito tayo sa Ads Manager. I'll go ahead and create an ad. Alright, so let's continue. Dito, dito na tayo sa boost. For example, nag-boost na tayo. Yan. Tayo sa, tayo sa targeting. Alright. So... Here's what I mean by this. I'll be demoing siguro yung sa locations na lang na part. So, the good thing with Boost Post naman din and Ads Manager is both you can customize yung age, gender, and pati yung demographics. Mas maganda lang talaga rin yung pag-target ng demographics dito sa Ads Manager. I'll discuss later. Pero, dito muna tayo sa locations. So, for example, sa Boost Post, alright? We're at Boost Post. Dito, pag nag-boost tayo ng post, let's say, sige. Yan. Yung age natin, ma-adjust natin. And dito tayo sa location. Let's say, target market natin is Marikina. Marikina, Metro, Manila. Yan. So, ang target natin dito is mga taga Marikina. Lahat actually nang nasa Marikina. Yung mga recently na nasa Marikina, yung mga nakatira sa Marikina. Minsan yung bumisita lang sa Marikina. Yan yung mga target natin. Pero kapag nag-ads manager tayo, mas specific. Ito, demo ko. So, locations. For example, type ko dito. Search locations. Marikina City. Marikina City. 
Yeah. All right. So it's still the same. Makita natin 25 uh, miles radius. Pero ang difference niya sa boost post, ito na yung sa boost post, ito yung sa ads manager. Difference niya is may kita mo dito, people living in or recently in this location, people living in this location, people recently in this location, and people traveling in this location. So, ang difference niya is pag kunyari dito ka sa boost post gumawa. For example, meron kang gym. Ang business mo is gym, di ba? Something about fitness. Now, if yung gym mo located sa Marikina, ang gugustoy mong targeting dito na audience are people living in Marikina or people who usually visits or goes to Marikina. Hindi mo gugustuhin yung mga taong nagta-travel dito sa Marikina kasi syempre, di ba, minsan lang sila, like once a year or maybe twice a year lang sila pumunta ng Marikina. Mas gugustuhin mo yung people living in or recently in this location. Now, sa ads manager, select mo yun. Ngayon, dito sa boost post, wala. Yung mga lately or siguro yung mga na-pick up lang ng GPS na mga nasa Marikina, yun ang makukuha niya dito sa boost post. Mas targeted talaga dito and mas specific when it comes to ads manager. Mas accurate yung targeting. As I mentioned, basic lang tayo. Hindi ko i-discuss lahat para hindi nga masyadong info overload for you. So, that's actually why ads manager is better. That's the second reason why. Now, the third reason is your ads have more placements. So, what do I mean by placements? Ito yung kung saan nakapwesto yung ads natin, di ba? Minsan, di ba, may makikita kayong ads dito sa taas, minsan nandito sa side, di ba? So, ang maganda is dito sa ads manager, makukuha natin yung magandang placement for our ads compared sa boost post. Sige, pakita ko ngayon. Alright, sa boost post, ang placements lang niya is ito. Ito lang option. Kung gusto mo, ang placement niya is Facebook, Instagram, or Messenger. Alright, so that's how boost post is done for placements. Now, comparing it to ads manager, meron dito, may kita mo platforms, Facebook, audience network, Instagram, and Messenger. And the best part about placements sa ads manager is may gantong option. Pwede mong i-check or i-untick kung ayaw mo makita sa feed, di ba? Pero I recommend, pakita mo siya sa feed, stories, yan. Pwede rin dito sa mga in-streams, ganyan kung gusto mo. Search, articles, on your right, nakikita mo yung sample nila kapag sa feed na siya gagawin. Or pag sa stories, ganito yung itsura niya. So, yun yung freedom or yun yung binibigay na perks when it comes to ads manager. Yun lang siguro muna yung i-discuss ko para like na-mention ko kanina, hindi masyadong info overload. After all, we're just talking about the basics of social media marketing. For these types of concerns or yung mas in-depth talaga, yung mas detailed, I'll go ahead and create another video for that. I'll be posting siguro on my page yung content na mga ipopost natin sa YouTube para at least maabangan nyo na rin. Kasi I've already prepared 10 content. Siguro, if I have everything finalized, I'll put it in the description below. So, I think let's head on to the next topic. Recommended tools to use. Alright. So, our next topic would be the recommended tools to use. So, again, this is just the basic. So, I won't go detailed pagdating sa mga tools na You can go ahead and check these tools. The best part about this is my recommendations are all free. Asana, Neon Tools, Canva, IPKey, and Lightroom. So, isiguro discuss ko na lang kung bakit ito ang mga recommended tools ko. Alright, so Asana. Asana is a project management tool. Kung gagawa ka ng content calendar like yung na-demonstrate ko kanina, Asana is actually the best tool to use when it comes to uh, project management. Kung meron kayong team, pwede kang mag-add ng members din doon, pwede nila makita yung tasks, pwede kang mag-assign ng tasks. So that's how Asana can help you with your brand or your business. Now, Neon Tools naman, I've actually shared a TikTok video, link below as well. I talked about Neon Tools and its benefits. It's an 8-in-1 tool. Siguro I can go ahead and create another YouTube video for that, discussing or getting in-depth with Neon Tools and how it can help you with your marketing or social media management career. And the next one is Canva. So I think most of us know what Canva is. If not, so Canva provides templates for graphic designs. So, magaganda yung mga templates on very professional looking and pwede ka rin gumawa ng mga themed designs sa Canva. And it's also free. Everything is free. The fourth one is iPicky. What I love about iPicky is it has the features of other software or editing softwares out there. Like Photoshop, meron yung iPicky, mga vector masks, Merong mga light adjustments, so you can actually edit professional photos in iPicky. I've been using this one for years now. This was actually recommended by one of my professors. I highly recommend iPicky. Mas maganda kung manood kayo ng mga YouTube videos about this one. But yes, if you want, I can go ahead and actually create another video discussing iPicky and how to use it. And lastly, Lightroom. This is an editing photo editing app. So you can edit your photos here. Maraming mag magagandang filters. So those are my recommended tools that you can use every day. Now, quality or quantity? Marami kasing tatanong sa akin ito eh. And I've also seen a lot of good answers from different people. And 88% of marketers would choose quantity 
over quality. And let me tell you why. So this picture that you're seeing is a search bar. Now, in a social media world, every social media platform has a search bar, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or my search tab. And the more posts that we create, the more chances of winning. It's true. For example, I would always post social media content, 30 content in one month. I would outpost other people or other brands or other businesses. And kapag nag-search sila, for example, they're now looking for social media marketing agencies or social media marketing coach, ang mga lalabas dyan, syempre yung mga posts na ginagawa ko kasi lagi ako naglalagay ng hashtags, lagi kong nilalagay yung social media marketing coach sa caption ko or sa mga graphic designs ko. More likely, mas lalabas yung mga posts or mga content na ginagawa ko kaysa sa iba kasi sobrang dami kong mag-post eh. Unlike, for example, gumawa ka ng isang video, sobrang quality ng video, ang ganda ng lighting, very professional talaga itura. Pag nag-search, may kita ba yung quality mong video? Eh, hindi ka nga sure kung magpa-perform na maganda yung video mo sa algorithm ni Facebook or ni YouTube. So, mas maganda talaga is quantity over quality. Hindi ko naman sa sinasabing mawawala na ng quality yung work mo. As much as possible, if you can do both, that would be the perfect combination. Pero, what I suggest that you prioritize is quantity. So if you're looking at the screen right now, it says here, quality is subjective while quantity is not. Explain ko what this means. For example, nag-post ako ng quality video. Ganda ng lighting, di ba? Parang professional talaga yung pagkakagawa. Now sa Facebook, let's say 80% nagustuhan yung video na ginawa ko. 20% pa rin talaga. Merong hindi magugustuhan yung gawa ko. So para sa kanila, hindi pa quality yun. So we can't please everyone. And quality is subjective. Pwede yung pinos natin, siguro magustuhan na ng 90% ng mga tao, which is enough, di ba? Compared dun sa 10%, of course, we didn't prove yung 10%, pero still, kahit anong gawin natin, no one's going to be perfect, no content would be perfect, no video would be perfect. So, as much as possible, quantity tayo, quantity gaming tayo, di ba? Kapag quantity naman, hindi mo makikwestiyon yung quantity. Basta nagpo-post ka araw-araw, pa-post ka 3 to 5 content per day, quantity na yun, di ba? Kahit sabihin natin na, for example, hindi mo masyadong ineffortan yung mga videos na yun, pero you are providing lots of values to your customers, di ba, or your audience, then, iisipin na rin nila na quality yung video or yung mga content na ginagawa mo. Alright, so I guess uh, we've covered everything in the outline or the topics in this episode. Now, if you want to learn more about social media marketing tips or, for example, hacks, or if you want some marketing materials, Join Social Media Marketing Tips for Filipino Entrepreneurs. As much as possible, we will engage with each other para at least malaman namin kung ano yung mga struggles. And I want you to be a part of this community kasi there's something big coming up that I would be announcing probably within a month or two. Hopefully everything goes. You can go ahead and ask me a lot of questions related to social media marketing or business. Anything that I can uh, provide value to you, i-share ko dito sa group na ito at saka sa sessions na gagawin natin sa Zoom. Alright, so first of all, I want to thank you kasi umabot ka dito sa part ng video. Please know that I'll be creating more content like these, more about social media marketing, hacks, tools, everything that you want to know. Just put a comment so you can also suggest some topics. And yeah, I hope to see you in our next video. This would be a learning series. So I'll be uploading some topics as well connected to social media marketing. So thank you very much and I hope you subscribe and like this video.